Good evening. Welcome to the May 15th, 2017 regularly scheduled Midland Public School Board of Education meeting. At this time, I ask everyone to please turn off your cell phones. They will interfere with our television feed. And then if you would all stand and join me in saying the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Scott, if you could take roll call. Yeah, because the chair's not going to fall apart. Okay, yeah, there's a divot in the... President Brandstad. Here. Vice President Singer. Here. Treasurer Frazee. Here. Member Baker. Here. Member Blasey. Here. Member Friedel. Here. All are present. Welcome, everybody. Moving into item two, which is our consent agenda. 2.1 is approval of our budget workshop and regular meeting minutes from April 17th, and also our special board of education meeting on May 5th. 2.2 is the following staff members who are, have announced their resignations and those effective dates. 2.3 is purchase of custodial supplies for next school year. 2.4 is our annual fire suppression and alarm system inspections and service bids. 2.5 is the Jefferson Middle School facade. 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 Excuse me. <laughs> That's why I'm an engineer, not an English person. <laughs> All right. So um, anyway, to redo that, 2.6 is the purchase of two school buses. And 2.7 is device purchase request, which will, I think this will complete, right, our technology, our first technology purposes, um, purchases to do one-to-one -one computing for every student in our district, <coughs> along with um, updating our staff mobile devices. And that is all for the consent agenda. Do I have a motion? Angel, before oh, yes. Do, um, under 2.7 staff mobile devices, it says the pricing is for, and it's 525 there. There was an error of what, maybe what number? So okay. 525 Dell 3189 Chromebook. Thank you for that clarification. <coughs> okay, I'll move that we adopt the consent agenda items 2.1 through 2.7, including uh, corrections made by Mr. Sherrill. Thank you. Support. All right, moved by Scott, supported by Patrick. Is there any discussion? I think the uh, facade in Jefferson's gonna look great. Mm -hmm. It's uh, mm -hmm. good, good timing, and um, that'll make that school look so much nicer. Uh, I'm excited to see that, that we're getting a, a smaller bus. I know that there were challenges of getting the buses down some courts and with um, what we're required to do for picking up some students now that was necessary and then the <coughs> device purchases um, the Dell Chromebooks seem like a, a great way to go a great bang for your buck and um, I took a look at those Chromebooks they look fabulous and I think they're about $280 each Dave's, I think Dave's here yeah. he's got loads of software on so I think it approaches pretty close to 300, is that right, Dave? That's how you do that? Yeah. Yes, and, and I'd note also that all of these under the consent is uh, bond dollars, except for the facade, yeah. and, <coughs> and that, that is general fund dollars, so, so it's like they're citizens, so yes. there are no bonds. Yes, definitely. All right, any other discussion? All right, this time, all those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? All right, the consent agenda passes. All right, moving into section three, we're going to um, flip 3.1 and 3.2 tonight. So we're going to start with the Chestnut Hill PYP fifth grade exhibition. So all these fabulous <coughs> displays we have up here. Ouch. 
Good evening. Thanks for having us. We're very excited to be here. We have three of our 30 student groups that just presented their exhibition projects on May 9th to parents, friends, and the community. Um, they've done a great job. And I wanted to be sure that we explained a little bit about exhibition before we began. So Amy Saberin is here, and she is our building PYP coordinator to talk about exhibition. And then the kids will each share with about their own projects. Good evening, my name is Amy Saberin, and I am the PYP coordinator at Chestnut Hill Elementary and Seabird Elementary. Uh, the PYP exhibition is a culminating learning experience for fifth grade students that requires these learners to show the knowledge and skills that they have built during their PY experience over the last several years. Exhibition allowed students to pursue their passions as they related to the central idea of people can express themselves to inspire others and to make a positive difference in the world. Students formed collaborative groups based on common interests and researched information that was relevant in the world and important to them. We had a wide variety of topics, some of which included Syrian refugees, music, art, children's hospitals, sports, cooking, and women's empowerment. The work was intense as students learned how to thoughtfully research a topic, work with group members, reflect on their learning, create research writing and presentations, and think about how they could take actions with their acquired knowledge. Students took action in a variety of ways, including writing to an author, encouraging them to write about their topic, writing to a company to try to get them to change their practices, donating equipment to classrooms to encourage students to be more active, organizing activities to participate in that show how girls can positively support one another, finding healthy recipes and sharing them with others, and many, many other wonderful actions. We are so proud of the accomplishments we saw. The fifth graders were asked to reflect on how the primary years program has helped them to grow. A few comments from the students themselves included, the knowledge of the PYP learner profile will make me a better person in life. It helped me grow as a communicator. I understand people's culture better. I grew closer to my group members. You can't look up everything on a computer. <laughs> it changed the way I look at the world. I took action and made a difference. It even changed the way I feel about myself. Not only did the students reflect on their growth, but parents also left feedback after the students presented their projects during an evening exhibition presentation on May 9th. Some comments from the parents included, very impressive. The kids were very prepared. The kids were more prepared to answer my questions than I was prepared to ask them. All the students did a great job on the project, very creative. They were able to explain what they did and why. They were able to express themselves in their own unique way with their group. These skills will be able to be used for the years to come. Wonderful. It is great to see the students' enthusiasm about their project. Lots of information gathered, and clearly, they have learned empathy for others. Impressive work. An excellent platform for kids to explore and dive deeply into a topic. This initiative by the school is really commendable. All the presentations and materials were really mature and interesting. It has been a pleasure working with the fifth graders and their teachers as they explored their topics and learned about how the PYP has made them stronger students, allowed them to gain many academic skills, taught them valuable lessons about collaboration with others, and has shown the students about the ways that they can have a positive impact on the world around them. We have several fifth graders here that would like to share their exhibition projects with you. To start off, we have Grace, Alyssa, and Heather, who will share their music project with you. Hi, I'm Heather, and my line of inquiry is an inquiry into how people are inspired into making music. And I learned about how mostly people will grow up and how their household impacts how they think on music and how they, <coughs> um, for example, get into music and how some people like to start playing instruments and singing. Hi, I'm Grace. Uh, my inquiry, uh, my inc my line of inquiry, was an inquiry into how music can inspire others to make a positive change in the world. It's about how sometimes you you can inspire other people to not only make a change in the world, 
but if you make a change in the community, you can write a song showing about showing how about pollution can affect your community, or how things can hurt your com how things can hurt your community. Sometimes music can make a change. Hi, I'm Alyssa. My line of inquiry was an inquiry into how individuals can express themselves through music, and I learned about how music can tell you the culture of people or can tell you how they grew up. Our action, we made an iMovie telling people how they cannot hurt their vocal cords. Um, so our action plan is we are going to do a coin drive with the Chestnut Hill second graders to raise money to buy things for the Humane Society in Midland, like crates for dogs, food for cats and dogs, and uh, um, other things. We would collect the money from our school and then donate it. Um, my line of inquiry is reasons animals end up in shelters and how shelters came to be. Um, I'm Michaela, and my line of inquiry was the in impact people can have on animals. Um, I'm Claire, and my line of inquiry was how people and animals can connect to make a <coughs> positive difference. Hello, my name is Carson, and my line is, who are some artists who make slash made something that makes slash made a positive difference? Um, what happened was um, I was researching and I, be, I came upon some um, articles that were saying that Wallace C. Kandinsky had um, influenced his um, people to express themselves using art by um, painting their emotions because when he did it, he was painting how um, how when he listened to music, how he saw the colors, and then he would push them onto the paper. And then um, I also heard, saw that Wallace E. Kandinsky um, also was one of the artists. And so what he did was he what he drew a helicopter drawing, which is now closely related to the drawings that we the helicopter that we have now. And that would have helped um, the engineers and other people. Um, get to that point to make the helicopter. Hi, my name is Liv, and my line of inquiry is how can you make a positive impact on the earth through art? And I learned that there is many different ways to express yourself <laughs> through art. Hi, my name is Katie, um, and my line of inquiry was how can old art influence you to make modern art and to influence our modern culture? The main thing I learned through exhibition was how I can work with a group and put my interests with other people's interests to make a big project. Um, our action was to have an art sale this summer, um, raising money for the Humane Society, and we're also going to donate our hands-on project to um, the pres to a preschool, um, Chippewa Preschool. Um, our hands-on project went with Liv's line of inquiry, and it is um, Clorox containers with duct tape, and you can spin them to make different patterns. Do you guys have any questions that you would like to ask some of us? They are really cute. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I, I have one. Maybe a couple. <coughs> um, <coughs> Heather, is that right? Your inquiry struck a chord with me um, that uh, growing up in the effect of music I thought was really interesting um, because growing up, when I grew up, wasn't into music at all. I would had no influence of music in my life. My parents didn't play it. My friends didn't play it. We focused on sports. My wife comes from a completely different background. She still plays a saxophone and, and is very musical. Three of my children put, play piano and, and they take lessons a couple times a week. So it's good to see that influence, and I think it's very important that our students have a musical influence in their life, because now sitting back and watching them play, I regret not being able to learn when I was younger. I tried. I've taken lessons 
as recent as last summer, and I cannot read music to save my life, and it was just too frustrating, and, and, and I was wasting my instructor's time <laughs> because I couldn't get my head around <coughs> reading the music. So I applaud you guys for, for doing that and having that initiative and bringing awareness uh, to the school and to students at large. Hopefully, people watching this will, will want that musical influence in their life. One thing that, that struck me is the, this art group, when you started talking about your project then and how you're creating art to sell to support the animal shelter and how you crossed over from not only you, what, what your project was, but you brought in someone else's project as well to support that. And so many times in business I see people working in silos, working in their own area, not really understanding or knowing what's going on outside of what they're doing. So I commend you for, for looking and seeing what your peers are doing and reaching out to see how you can support them as well. I, I went to the presentation last week and I was just amazed at all, go, just going around the gymnasium and all, it gives me goosebumps. There was so there were so many cool projects and so and you could ask questions and you guys were Johnny on the spot just coming up with great answers and and reasons why you chose what you chose and um, it was really phenomenal. Um, it I, I used to be a high school teacher and to me to see where you guys are in your grade and what you're gonna bring when you get to high school, all these things that you've learned already, all this research and, and understanding and presenting and answering people's questions on the spot. Mm -hmm. um, you're just gonna be so well prepared, so I applaud you for that. I'm gonna ask you a real question this time instead of making a statement. <laughs> <laughs> Who has experience with not being able to look it up on the internet and what was that like? Tell us. What was it that you couldn't find that you had to physically do or experience? Well, actually, I don't really remember it, but I know that in, I know that in third grade one time. Well, I don't know if it was in third grade, maybe second or third, second or third. But our teacher wanted our teacher wanted us to find to find out something without looking it up. So I had a really hard time with it. I had to look, look in a bunch of books, and, <laughs> and, and so I still couldn't find it, because, yeah. You can't, you can't look up what that violin feels like on your chin, or when you draw the bow across it, right? You have to no. experience it. Anything like that that you can share with us? Um, From any of your group members uh, as well. Don't feel like I'm just putting you on the spot. <laughs> um, well, when I started violin, I just thought it was pretty, so <laughs> so I wanted to play it. So, yeah. Now that I know how to play, I'm really happy. Could I ask a question? Um, with the animal shelter, uh, so what are some positive impacts uh, people can have on animals or animals can have on people? Um, actually, I think that was Michaela's. Um, so people can have an impact on animals and animals can have an impact on people. The way people can impact animals is they can actually help out animals that are in danger. And animals can help people with needs like like when you're blind or can't hear, they can help you like get around and stuff. Thank you. I would ask, did you get to choose your project in your group or... Uh and you did a little research before that or brainstorming to decide what kind of project you wanted you to do? Because there's back. they're all so <laughs> interesting, yeah. We can explain how we started out. Um we started out by brainstorming ideas and things that we're passionate about. And then we wrote it down on a piece of paper. And then our teacher collected it and like we found like we found like groups of people who all liked the same things. And so we put all those together and then you decided what one you wanted to join. And that's how the groups were formed and the topics were formed. And did you spend a lot of, 
a lot of time on this project, like a month or two months or almost all we year? I think we spent extremely <laughs> long time on it. <laughs> <laughs> we started in November. Can I hear Carson tell me how he picked his, his project? Um, so what I did was um, I had recently like went to art and so it was our class and then what we did was we went to art and we were talking about um, Wallace E. Kandinsky and some other artists that um, what it was some I don't know remember the name but he had made a painting in, of a conflict that happened and it, that painting became famous over time and then when that when it became famous it helped resolve the conflict that was happening so and, and then that that kind of like showed me how I could do this project so by doing that I was able to vision what we would be able to do so do you remember what the conflict was uh, no <laughs> speaking of conflicts how was it working in in a group did you ever disagree <laughs> <or>? <laughs> So in our group, um, I think when we disagreed, we kind of had to put together what we all had in mind and make it into something different and new. We didn't have very many conflicts except for when we were trying to put together the trifold board. <laughs> And there's an Indian instrument called the sitar. So yeah, I wanted to do like music around the world, but those two didn't want to. So we agreed <laughs> that we could have two <laughs> Indian instruments. So. A good compromise. Yeah. <laughs> I am amazed for being sixth grader. I can remember a report I did in sixth grade. I drew a poster and I wrote a report and basically that was it. And to see what all of you have done and to be able to stand up, you have such poise and self-confidence and good speaking skills, not to mention all the research and the beautiful projects that you did. So thank you for sharing and all your teachers and everybody else that's involved. Um, what, we, what we were doing, we, we actually made um, some essays. And here's my essay. And what we did was we researched our topic and our line and then put the information that we got into our essays so that we were able to um, help represent our topic. And we would have key concepts such as responsibility and perspective and form. And then when we did that, we would find those perspectives. They had, we had questions that we would make. There, for our class, I don't know, it was different for other classes, but we would have three and then we had we had three questions per um, was attribute, and then for each attribute we do three, and then that would have have a total of eight times three, which would be twenty four. So we'd have twenty four questions. We would answer a majority of those questions, and then we would put at least five of those into our essay. So we would have an introduction, and then the five, and then we do the conclusion. Oh, battle yes. thing? Yes. Can you demonstrate it really quick? Yes. <laughs> I was like old school thinking. I finally realized that's what they meant by Clorox. Oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I know. I was trying to think of the Clorox bottles, but this makes more sense. You can turn these to make different patterns okay. here. That. And we held them up by using bottle caps. So we also reused those. Oh, cool. Oh. Nice. And that's going to a preschool this summer, is that right? Yes. Um, and also one of them um, that um, Liv had said, she found um, one of these that fit with Wallace Kandinsky. And I like this one a lot. Um, <laughs> it's this one. Okay. Yes, he used different colors and emotions to put that into his art. Very nice. Great job. Great Thank job, you guys. all. Thank very awesome well. job, Thanks guys. Thanks for coming out tonight.
Daddy? Yeah, while well, they're taking down, I'm just going to say, wow. <laughs> Those just amazing kids, aren't yeah, they? Yeah, they are. <coughs> we'll recognize our first chart shining star this evening. Will Jody Wing would come up and join me? I'll read a little bit about Joni. Joni began her employment with Midland Public Schools in 2009 as a substitute paraprofessional. In 2011, Joni was hired into a permanent paraprofessional. I'm having trouble with paraprofessionals. A paraprofessional <laughs> position at Plymouth. And in 2014, she was promoted into her current position as an administrative assistant at Plymouth Elementary School. Joni was nominated for the Shining Star by a Plymouth parent. Among their comments were the following. Joni approaches all facets of her position as an administrative assistant at Plymouth with enthusi enthusiasm and a smile. I, I witnessed her answer the phone while applying a bandage to a hurt child. <laughs> <clears throat> she can field parent questions while taking the temperature of a child. <laughs> She's a stupendous mentor for the staff and a steadfast champion for all students. She goes out of her way to get to know families on a first name basis. She is an integral part of showing pioneers how to be compassionate, successful members of our society. Even on our busiest days, I've never witnessed Joni with a sour attitude. Plymouth would not be the same without her. Congratulations, Joni. Congratulations. Congratulations. Thank you. And our second second shining star is Sherry Goff. Sherry would come up and join me. <laughs> Can we read a little bit by Sh uh, Sherry? Ms. Goff joined the Midland Public School staff in 1997 as an occupational therapist with special services. Throughout her 20 years with MPS, Sherry has worked in both secondary and all K-12 buildings except Chestnut Hill, Seabird, and East Point. <laughs> Sherry earned a bachelor's degree in elementary education from the University of Kent in 1974 and her bachelor's degree in occupational therapy in 1997. Sherry was nominated for the Shining Star by several MPS colleagues. Among their comments were the following. Sherry has played a huge role at Plymouth and MPS for many different supports. She initiated the zones of regulation to MPS and provided professional development for the special education staff. At Plymouth, she, was served, she has served on an ITC committee team lunch meetings, parent meetings, Little Star Social Skills Group, and the Nitwit Group. <laughs> I had to read that one twice. That's a cro crochet, knit, knitting, and lunch group. She has created and provided paraprofessional training to various buildings on how to use best practices to support special education <coughs> students, making, making them successful and as independent as possible in the general education setting. In meetings, she is calm, cool, and collected always expressing the positive and strengths of the student. As an occupational therapist, she is constantly searching for ways to improve herself as a therapist, whether it be for data collecting, therapy ideas, or creative ways to service the various needs of her students. Sherry is just a friendly, knowledgeable person. She has a busy caseload, and so fi finds time to do a whole classroom lesson, as well as support her colleagues with questions and new therapy ideas. And by the way, I read Sherry's name the other night as well as Rear Stack because she is retiring in a number of years, right? How many years? Well, 42. 42. Wow. wow. Spanning 42 years. Very impressive. Wow. Congratulations. <laughs> Congratulations. You are amazing. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for all 42 years. Yes. <laughs> <coughs> All right, moving into 3.3, we're going to have a Plymouth construction update. Drive by, you see it looks like an entire construction zone. So, 
So that tonight would be an appropriate time to kind of come out and update you guys, uh, give you some pictures of just what Plymouth looks like now. Um, some of the more obvious. <laughs> okay, how's that? <laughs> uh, some of the more obvious changes uh, that people notice when they drive by um, are we are going to have a new secure entry. There's a new gym cafeteria platform level. Um, we're getting a new media center, which will include a maker space. Um, and then they're installing cameras um, and then new cement in front of the school, too, eventually. So those are kind of some of the changes that people might notice in the community if they're not directly involved with Plymouth. Um, the projects that will help Plymouth um, function a little smoothly, more smooth, um, would be improving the updated electrical throughout the school. They're putting in new flooring in the hallways and classrooms. Uh, we're getting new casework in the classrooms, which is like the cabinets and that. Um, they're getting new classroom doors, which you would think is not a big deal, but it is a big deal. Um, and then we currently have chalkboards, and I don't know if many of you are familiar with Plymouth, but the chalkboards come out from the wall. They're slanted, um, which creates great storage underneath, but it's not a very effective use of space. Um, so those are being taken out um, and put in flat walls with whiteboards and a tack board. So a little more modern um, than chalkboards kind of upgrading there. So we're excited about that. Um, currently, the classrooms all have hooks for the students' backpacks, um, but those will be replaced with cubbies, uh, which will give a little more individual space and kind of separate things, which is nice. And then we're also getting new heating and cooling system, which again will help regulate the temperature, um, overall being cost effective, hopefully. Uh, as you guys know, this is a nice little aerial view of Plymouth. It's pretty much when we invite people in and introduce them to the school, and we let them know it's shaped like a capital H. Um, so with Sugnet Road being out front, you have basically your lower L side on um, the right side of the building, I guess left side if you're facing the building, and then, um, no, sorry, right side is lower L, and then upper L is over on the other side. The center bar for the H is really of the community area, so it's like the um, big bathrooms, it's the cafeteria, um, which would also be the gym, and then it was the library. So that's kind of our community space that joins the two sides. Um, we have doors on the both ends of the H's. Uh, those do remain locked right now during the school day, uh, but hopefully with a secure entrance, um, it'll stream more of the people in the middle. Um, we do have those doors on the outside open when kids are entering and then obviously kids can exit out of those. But we're hoping that um, kind of keeping track of that will make it a little safer and then people will come in through the secure entrance. Um, you might think I had a lot of time at work this week. I did not. I actually enjoy doing these things, so, you know, I did it at home. This is kind of a close-up here where you're looking at the entrance. Um, and right now, people just walk in, and our offices are situated a little bit off to the left, and so we don't have a really clear vision of who's coming in the school. Um, with the secure entrance, they'll come in, and then they'll be directed, just like at Central Park, kind of off to the right and into that main office area before um, they're let into the school. So that will be a huge improvement there. Uh, this is kind of just a dark picture on my phone, sorry, but this is looking from um, looking from the outside, and you can kind of see right here. That will be that secure entrance area, just this space right here. So people will walk in, and then they'll head right over into the office. Here's a better picture. Um, this is the frame they put up, so this is kind of where we're at with that secure entrance as far as that goes. Um, and you can see off to the side is where our office is situated right now, so that will be a huge improvement. Uh, the next thing is looking at the addition. So the yellow room is a kindergarten classroom, and that kind of is the end of the building. Currently, our exit door is right here. Um, and so everything outlined in red will be the addition. So that will include the cafeteria, the gym, the platform, um, and then the kitchen space. Overall, it's just a little over 10,000 square feet, which seems huge to me. And so that's what people are noticing as they drive by. Um, the way that it'll function is that people will head down to that kindergarten way and then there will be um, what's right now an exterior door will actually go into an interior door and then they'll go in the hallway um, where they'll be able to get access to all of those new spaces. This slide again just shows those spaces with the label so you can kind of see the layout. Um, a nice feature 
is that the gym and cafeteria will have a, um, a moving divider as a wall so that you know as needed we can open that space up for things like when we do the fifth grade exhibition um, we can open that up so we have a lot of space but just for everyday function as far as running gym classes during lunchtime which again is one of those huge things in elementary school we'll be able to put that wall in um, and have two spaces out of that one Another really neat feature um, is they're going to be putting an exterior door somewhere in this space so that when we have nighttime events, um, which we have a lot at Plymouth, uh, parents will be able to access that space without necessarily being in the whole school. So that's a really nice feature too, just even as far as cleaning at night. Uh, this is what it looked like on Friday. These are pictures as of Friday. You can see they're starting to build the walls. I'm a picture person, so I thought, oh, the more the better. <laughs> there they go. So they are making progress. I um, have had a couple of students say, Mrs. Doan, can't you just hire more men? I'm like, <laughs> no. And they're like, I think this could be done faster. So they're enjoying it, too. Uh, and this is kind of just looking in from the front to a different angle. And this picture actually shows. So this would be the kindergarten room and then kind of how it hooks on to the rest of the building and goes out back. Um, and if you drive by, you can see the green fence and you can see how big the outline really is. It's very neat. So the next part I want to talk about is going to be the new office space. That's another big thing that people will notice. Um, I have to laugh because when I came back from spring break, the windows are boarded, obviously, for safety reasons, but I was like, oh my gosh, that looks horrible. <laughs> so unfortunately, this is the front of Plymouth right now, um, but we know it's going to be an awesome end result, so we're looking forward to that. Um, for those of you who are familiar with Plymouth, we're talking the library space. So it's that very front space that will now become the new office. Um, again, just to reorient with what the drawings show, this is that secure entrance where they'll then come in on the arrow and then go out into the hallway. Um, so when anybody enters the office in that main office space, we'll have um, our office para sitting up front along with our wonderful AA, Joni Wing, sitting right in there to greet people. Um, so those will be the first faces they kind of see and that's where they check in. Uh, you can see we have a sick room, which is a great addition. We don't really have a designated space for that right now. Um, and it's also very obviously strategic as the whole thing is so that um, the front office people will have a clear vision line, sight lines, to those kiddos. Um, but it still offers them enough privacy that you know we can store medicines and also as they're getting sick and we're waiting for parents, they don't have to be out uh, with the general population, which is a good thing. The front of that space will be divided into three different offices. Uh, one is intended to be a principal office, one a conference room, and one an office to um, just be an office for the social worker, family intervention specialist, um, just the extra space when we have people that aren't necessarily full-time at Plymouth, but need that space to work with students one-on-one -on -one or have a private space. Uh, and then in the back, which you can't really see, is a, a door that will come in and out, and there will be copy machines and things like that, more of a workroom, so teachers have easy access and, again, don't have to kind of mess with that secure area, too. They'll be able to go in and out. And this is what that space looks like right now. Um, as many of you know, we have blocked off our library at spring break so they could start construction. And our library has been on um, mobile carts, which actually has worked quite well. Um, our librarian has done a fantastic job with just adjusting and uh, still meeting students' needs and teachers' needs to keep that going. So she's done a wonderful job. Uh, this would be the sick room right here. This is kind of the entrance to the offices. I'll probably keep a Gatorade bottle there all year long. <laughs> this is inside one of the offices. Was that your office? <laughs> yes, it was. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's exciting. So it's coming along um, a lot every day. You know, it started off where we couldn't really see the things they were doing. They were down in the basement. They were up in the ceiling. Um, we heard them more than we necessarily saw them and saw the changes. Um, but it's coming along pretty pretty fast uh, and it actually has served as a nice nice playground addition in the sense that I do today I was noticing out at lunch recess there's a group of little boys probably second grade who sit and there's some holes ripped in the green part that covers and they just sit there and they just watch the construction for their entire lunch you know of course I had to say don't rip that bigger but after that <laughs> then I could really appreciate the fact that they were watching and, and thinking 
Um, and I, we have also had some comments from our young fives teacher. You know, at first it was kind of um, a stress to her because it was different, but then she started to see the benefit of it. She said, Margaret, we can talk about force and motion. We can talk about all these bigger concepts and it's real life. I mean, every time we hear a loud boom, we stop and we go to the window and we say, what caused this? I mean, it, it's really cool because it's turned into a really positive experience um, and something you know, to kind of keep teachers thinking, you know, we're, it's a positive thing, we need to stay positive about this. So it's been really good. Um, obviously, we have some advice, if anyone wants to know, for the other schools as they start to go through this. Um, I will wait to be asked, but <laughs> I do have advice. <laughs> do you guys have any questions? Well, give us the advice. <laughs> <laughs> I'll do that at a later time, no. <laughs> How do you see the space being used and scheduled and I'm, it's, it's a little bit sad, Pam, but I'm most excited to be able to schedule gym classes and lunch simultaneously. Um, that's been a huge hassle with just having so many times that we need gym, but obviously, you know, gym teachers are needed other places too. I'm excited to not have to schedule my specials around the lunch hour, so that's an exciting thing. Um, we are packed pretty tight over there, uh, so I'm excited too when we have people we don't expect, you know, when we have the Jackie Warners or we have DHS or whoever needs to be in, we're kind of scrambling at this point to find that space that could work for them to have a private conversation. So I'm excited to have that space too. Um, we just do a lot of, a lot of things, uh, really cool things, and I think that this is just gonna help. I think it's also really neat for the families and the students. I think it's bringing them together. Um, it's kind of one of those strange moments where we can say, we got through this construction together, or oh my gosh, do you remember how that used to look? Look at it now. Um, the, the vibe is, is excitement in the air from the families. Um, yeah. How will it Good. impact your before and after school care? That's a great question. I would think it would offer more options for them because, again, we have that option to either make a bigger space if they need it or possibly, um, you know, two smaller spaces depending on what their need is. Um, and we are, the new space, the addition won't be ready till the deadline or the plan is January of 2018. So we will still be using our regular cafeteria and gym um, for the start of next year. Hopefully by semester we can go ahead and move into that new space. And remember there's like a second phase <coughs> going on as well in elementary, so when they take over that new space, right. that Margaret hasn't been able to talk about yet, will be her old gymnasium become the media center. Yes, center, yep. right? And then this maker space uh, being also built around that. So she just showed you it's kind of like phase one. Yeah. Phase two is yet to come, which will affect a lot of instruction as well as go forward. Yeah, I have to wrap my head around phase two still. I'm still in phase one. So right now, if I remember right, you have a lot of offices in the old computer lab. Where will those? So we have a lot of people in the old computer lab. Okay. Yeah, um, currently that serves as our band, choir, music, Spanish room. Um, so I don't know how that will exactly look. We've got to, you know, kind of even out sections and see what spaces we do have to use. Eventually that will become the maker space and we'll have a space for them. Um, but as far as starting off the year next year, we've got to wait until we settle our sections a little more. Okay. Yeah. So right now we're, 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 you know, we haven't granted them all the sections. We're still crossing numbers. Mm -hmm. So right now they're starting to look like they have less sections than they had this year. And so it's yet to, more than Margaret's mm -hmm. yet to be seen if the enrollment. And Plymouth is one of those tricky schools where enrollment kind of comes in late. So we've had it, gosh, a week before school, two weeks yeah. before school sometimes, another section in that building. So should I, if you know anybody who has a kindergartner that might be thinking about going to Plymouth, please get the paperwork in. Just come on in, give us a name, and we'll be good. <laughs> the only yeah. thing that makes me sad is my kids are gone. They're all out. Well, and that is the common conversation with the fifth graders. Like, this is ridiculous. We're not even going to get to see it. And I'm like, oh, sorry. You I'm know, so but excited for the rest of the school. Yeah, yeah. Great. It's a very cool time. It's, it's different. Not anything I would have expected with um, this year for me, not having, you know, that experience. But uh, it's been great. It's been really wonderful. So. It's still a year or so from the STEM Project Lead Away curriculum. But it was interesting what Margaret was saying about the boys because I uh, went in with my yeah. in a couple classrooms and teaching STEM with the stuff that's going on. Yeah. It's really and cool. Flexible work and some of the trades that are going on, and you should see them light up with just watching some of that. So would I get in trouble if I go over there tonight and cut a bigger hole in the screen? <laughs> <laughs> the whole thing's gone tomorrow. 
No, but anytime any of you guys want a tour, um, I, I, they probably don't really want me walking through it, but I like to, you know, pull on my principal hat and say, oh, I'm the principal now, I need to walk through. <laughs> so anytime you guys are around, please feel free and I'll stop mm. what I'm doing and give you a tour. It's very nice. Thank you very much. Right. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Much for the update. Yeah, and again, if anyone ever has any questions, you can always email too. I can't always get the answer, but the construction crew is fantastic about listening to my emails. <laughs> All right, moving into 3.4, which is our 2017 star volunteers. Yes, I think Cindy's going to put this up for us. So every year we have numerous, numerous, numerous volunteers. Um, we have so many great partners and agencies that um, we'd like to recognize some of them for all they do for us. Appropriately, we can always hear. You know, that's my voice, guys. That's not actually what I'm saying. Let's see what's going on. Um, so we have lots of volunteers throughout the district. Thank you, Cindy. You bet. Mike, Mike. Mike, Mike. <laughs> we'll try, Mr. Blazes. Um, but we, and I see a few of our members in the audience today, so we'll, we'll honor them here tonight. But each school uh, sends in um, some of their star volunteers and. Unfortunately, we can only recognize a one of them each year. So when we started this a few years back, we wanted to make sure we recognize our volunteers. We have one of the, one of the top-notch ones in the audience I see out here today. Ed Adams um, recognizing was Mrs. Kim Zimmer, and I'm going to try her last name, Janasco, has volunteered for nine years. I mean, look at some of the legacy of some of these people. Over the years, Kim has volunteered in many different areas, such as Count Me In, Junior Achievement, Carnival, PTO, Hospitality Chair, and most recently robotics, which continues to grow at the elementary. Organizing and facilitating <coughs> MD field trips, experiencing for students, organizing monthly surprises for staff, much, much more. At Carpenter, we have Miss Abby Shepard, coordinates for Kids Hope Program, Carpenter Street School through the first United Methodist Church of Midland. Um, recently, United Methodist looks like they're gonna also grant Central Park a grant, so they've been a great partner. Not only does Abby coordinate the program, she's also a mentor in the program and meets one-on-one -on -one with her mentee once a week. In addition, she spends time organizing the entire program, which entails recruiting, training, providing continued support to mentors involved in the program. Abby's always positive and upbeat, and as Evan, she enjoys the time she spends with her mentee. And, I, and I remember you heard a presentation from these mentees um, probably about a year ago from Carp, the good program. Justin Hill. Uh, Ms. Sarah Fillo uh, has volunteered at Chestnut Hill for five years. Some of the ways Sarah's helped at Chestnut Hill has been the Battle of the Books, School Carnival, chaperoning field trips, teacher appreciation lunch, and, and more. Sarah's been a part of the Chestnut Hill PTO for five years, then has been the treasurer for the past two years. Sarah's only willing to help out, and she always knows when things need to be done. I don't know how many are in the audience, but um, the next one, Mr. Cal Gutters, is in the back. I probably said your name wrong. Sorry, Cal. And Cal's been doing this for quite a while, volunteering in, at East Lawn, and we're going to recruit him into Central Park and some of the other schools potentially. Began working with Longview students and continues to science volunteer with students at East Lawn. Mr. Goders is one of the East Lawn science guys. He has changed students' lives for the better as they see they can be scientists, engineers, doctors, and whatever they want. East Lawn would like to particularly recognize Mr. Goders' efforts for pioneering the volunteer system at East Lawn. They will be carrying this through at Central Park. As a matter of fact, the appointed volunteers at Central Park will be known as the Goders Group. <laughs> Didn't know that. Oh, and, uh, Cal has even gone to training with our teachers on Project Lead the Way, and this is one of the exciting things that's also drove United Way to partner with us to help create more of this kind of organization to our volunteers. Excellent. Thank you. Plymouth. Mr. James Young has been volunteering at Plymouth for about two years. He volunteers in his daughter's classroom two or three times a week. Mr. Young reads with students during reading workshop and also supports general <laughs> class work throughout the day. He has built a great rapport with the students, is familiar with the classroom expectations and routine. Siebert. Mr. Cheryl Pertell has been a dedicated Siebert volunteer for several years. Ms. Pertell travels by bus several times a week. She comes in early, stays until the end of the school day. She volunteers in multiple classrooms with multiple children. She works with students individually and in small groups. Cheryl has a passion for teaching and has greatly impacted the success of many Seabird students. Mm. Okay, so Cheryl is here with us as well. Thank you. Woodcrest, Ms. Keona Bradford 
has volunteered at Woodcrest for the past four years. Kiona has done a fantastic job <coughs> serving as chairperson of the SOCOP for the last three years due to her leadership. SOCOP has prepared and continued to be something that students look forward to each and every year. Kiona also volunteers as a room parent. She volunteers at Woodcrest on, a, on a, at least a monthly basis. And when the SOCOP is drawing near, she volunteers on just about a daily basis. At Jefferson, we have Miss Lisa Rich has volunteered at Jefferson for six years. Lisa has been a volunteer with the JPAC group since her oldest son, who is now a junior at H.H. Dow, was a sixth grader. Lisa is currently the JPAC president. She volunteers several times a week, sometimes more, depending on what needs to be done. She has coordinated the Scholastic Book Fair for the last few years. She's always bringing in not just treats with staff, depends on hours, getting them ready to, uh, so the presentation is remarkable. Northeast. Mr. Greg John Johnich started volunteering in 2009 as a math mentor. He works with Vikings twice a week for about two hours during each visit. Greg loves to walk with kids and often thanks teachers for allowing them to help. Teachers mentioned he has a way of making kids feel good about math and students look forward to working with every kid. There you go, Angela, math. Hmm. I, I used to be a math mentor at North East, so yes. <laughs> Dow High, Ms. Dorian Kempner has, has been a volunteer with <coughs> Dow High Robotics program for six years. She's really been the driving force behind it, if you know Doreen. Um, she's instrumental in keeping the charge team running. Doreen coordinates robotics and music performances overlap. She handles the robotics communication to the superintendent's office, helps coach students in writing articles for the Midland Daily News, mentors students in making presentations and doing interviews, is one of the team photographers, is the coordinator for all of the 100 plus volunteers at the robotics events held twice a year and much, much more. She's there making it happen every day. Midland High, Miss Ann Beery has been a volunteer with the Midland High Music Program for many years. Her own children were in the program several years ago, but even though they have graduated and continues to volunteer countless hours with the music program, Ann has organized the entire music library for the band orchestra process that has taken approximately five years. This winter, she and another parent organized all the music for the Midland and Dow High Band's trip to Disney during spring break. So once again, thank you to all of our volunteers, and these are just only a few. We have many, many men mm -hmm. here do yes, that as well. Thank you to all of them. changing mics so we have technical okay. difficulties here and I gotta <laughs> find my space down here so each year we recognize the safety of our buildings uh, high priority in the district um, especially when it comes to working in comp so you can see that uh, we have a number of buildings that have uh, been term determined that um, they've been safe buildings had no accidents this year and they are Adams East Lawn Plymouth Woodcrest Northeast Midland High in the Administration Center Transportation Department grounds maintenance Science and Resource Center. So, sponsors of our building, so congratulations to them. Yeah. The 11th year yeah. of recognizing them. Excellent. Excellent. Good work. All right. Next up, item 4.0 or 4.1 is approval of the Midland County Educational Services Agency 2017 18 budget. So, each year, um, the four local school districts of our county are asked to approve the MCA budget. It is a formality that they are even uh, if you have a yes or no vote, they can go forward and do what they want. So it's kind of just a recommendation. Um, <coughs> we switched to formats about three years ago where we used to have them come over and present to you, but it was just a brief presentation. We want a little more detail. And so we have our uh, business people go over and meet with their folks. Bob Cooper um, with us tonight. And Lori Holder has uh, gone through that budget in detail. Um, uh, we, we see that they're counting their practices as they saw it, but we do have a couple concerns with the budget. And one is that their general fund balance is below the state 5% recommended, and, and therefore on the watch list, and that they have a built in pay increase. As I pointed out earlier tonight, a couple of board members when I said DBA, it mm -hmm. appears to be 2% when we go to the budget, which will be the low fund balance. That would be a concern. And some of you have voiced that concern to me as well. So, 
Discussion. I so move to right. uh, put it up for a vote. General fund, and then it's the special needs, I think, right, are the two different sure. funds. And so they track separate. them separate. Yep. The money does not flow between the two. It's true. There's two separate parts to theirs. There's a general education right. fund, which would be the smaller portion of what they have, and then there's a special education fund, which would be the larger portion of what they do. where we were with fund balance and when you get to a certain point you get a visit from the state we've always wanted to make sure that we never get to that point so i think i don't know i had some concern i had some concerns I as well that they were dipping to i consider a dangerously low point in what they budgeted right the fund balance at 4.9 percent um that, that's below the five percent threshold already and then to to even consider uh, pay increases uh, to administration is concerning. And um, other, I mean, the budget as a whole looks reasonable, but I have great concern for those things. I, I, I would hope that they're watching that fund balance, and I would hope that they'd be looking at adjustments um, to, to have a healthier fund balance. I apologize if I missed this. What happens if we vote no? It's really a formality. It's kind of like a recommendation to them. Their board gets to act either way. So what all four locals will take a vote and send um, the recommendation back to them that they can go wherever they want to do. Gotcha. Right. Yeah. We cannot split these either. No, you cannot. And I guess that was what I was trying to say earlier. It's, it's a yes on both. And you're right, Brad. The two funds are, are probably different issues, right, mm -hmm. for us, and so, uh, and, and we could send an explanation along if, if that's where you want to go on that part of it as well with them. We did voice specifically then some that mm -hmm. we had heard concerns from our board members mm -hmm. to be at that or meeting them in that area as well. I guess the other concern I have is the, the services that the districts use at the ESA aren't as, um, I don't see them using their services. I see them moving out to like Claire Gladwin, and I wonder why. Why Why is that happening? Is it because that um, there isn't a, a, these services provided here that, that the districts have to move out to get that kind of support? Um, I guess I would like more detail too. Uh, I, I tried to dig a little more on my own in their website to, to look for an annual report and to just uh, see see if I could find more information, and I didn't come up with it. Um, but in the future, I, w I would like to see more detail, and and maybe as a board we could consider sending someone there once a month to uh, as oversight for for their board meeting, so so we know um, and have a voice right there. Is this a roll call vote or is this just a yeah or not? Need to be, but you can if you wish. Okay. Okay. Does that anyone else have any other? I agree with <clears throat> my concerns. Echo with what's okay. been brought up. It's certainly troubling. Yeah. I mean, I guess I don't know if we brought what well, you brought it up too. The other thing that concerned me was a TBD that was in the budget that they gave yeah. us all to look at to approve which I guess I was surprised yeah. to see a, D, a TBD in a budget that you're asking for approval on, especially given the, the data that's in there. So that was a concern to me also. All right, I think maybe we will do a roll call vote at this just to make sure. Okay. All right, so, so if no, be. no more questions, we will. Okay, President Branstad. Vote no. 
Vice President Singer. No. Treasurer Frizee. No. Member Baker. No. Member Blazy. No. Member Friedel. No. And I also vote no. So we will convey that information well, to. Te technically, Mike, they, they sent two resolutions. One was support, and one was uh, not to support. And when I'm looking at that, it's it, it's titled disapproval of the budget, which it looks like you have to answer in the. Affirmative. Affirmative. So I, <laughs> think, I think what I heard from the board was your, your disapproval of the budget. I think you're going to have to make that the motion, and then you would, you would vote that you're going to send forth the resolution that disapproves of the budget. Gotcha. Okay, so right now we just disapprove Correct. the approval of the budget. So yeah. that was the first one. So now you need to bring so forth the other one. So we have to do a second motion. So you're moving to, you, you'll need a motion for someone to say that you disapprove okay. of the budget and then a second and then vote on that. Okay. Why you make the motion is good for the reason. Okay. So that's kind of like a 4.1.5 then or something that. Okay. So if someone would like to make a motion <coughs> for disapproval of the Midland County Educational Services Agency budget. So I'm, moved. There you go. Support. All right. All right. Scott, support. <coughs> I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. So Scott moved and Pam <coughs> supported. Thank and in light of the unanimous vote previously, I think we're probably all on the same page for this one. So maybe right. Just, uh, with concern, yeah, because the concern is with the general fund okay. portion of the two budgets. All right. Any other discussion? All right. All those in favor of disapproval of the Midland County Educational Services Agency 2017-18 budget say aye. 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 All those opposed? All right. <coughs> All right. Moving into 4.2. Bob, this is the EnviroClean Custodial Services contract renewal. Right. As you know, we have um, contracted out our custodial services since 2007. Um, we had been with a previous company before we went with EnviroClean in 2014-15 on a three-year contract which expires with this school year. We have before you a two-year contract extension. Um, it's for amount not to exceed uh, $1,494,001.08. Um, basically the reason that it's uh, not to exceed a total is because of uh, the um, money that's been in there or could be in there for the pay raises for the employees um, since that's something that we wanted to have input on and not just a blanket raise uh, based on like the service with this uh, performance it's the, like the maximum um, and of course most likely will come in less because we wouldn't do that all in the first year the other increases uh, which I wrote down uh, where we stood compared to the current contract um, you have to remember we're using more EnviroClean employees as building managers in our elementary buildings. We're also using them as if we have a building manager, let's say at uh, one of the schools that's an MPS employee but gets sick or hurt and we need somebody, uh, that's our source of filling that position. Um, we're reopening, if you will, or bringing back online Central uh, Park and the auditorium. Um, it's a different kind of building to clean requires different equipment mm -hmm. to clean it than a smaller elementary school would. Uh, so there's equipment involved there. Um, the other part, like I said, there's a little bit of, um, as we bring open the gyms and the, uh, like Margaret just showed you, the gyms and the cafeteria, the square footage is gonna change. They've been very good working with us on anything like that because you've gotta imagine even this summer to clean is gonna be an interesting thing and we'll take people that are say at Woodcrest and pull them from there and move them someplace else. And we'll be trying to open places. Uh, they've been very good working us, with us where we need people, when we need people. Um, the other interesting thing is if we take this contract, it's within uh, 20,000 of the contract we had with the previous company. And the contract we had with the previous company did not include any day personnel. So it's still very, very, um, I guess I'd call it reasonable in the, in the context that we're three years later what we were paying when we left the other company. 
Uh, we retained a lot of the same employees. Uh, so it's, it's, that's the one thing that stays constant. Some people are staying with us as we switch. So we have a recommendation that you would approve this to your contract extension. I move to support item 4.2. Support. Moved by Pam, support by Scott. Is there any discussion? The specialized equipment, different equipment for the new school? Just like uh, if you were in a high school, you wouldn't see them with the small floor scrubber. You guys have been to Main Street over in Central Park. You're going to need a rideable floor scrubber to get that thing Do we done in any time. own the equipment then? No, they own the equipment. They purchase it and they... Um, they own the equipment, just like when the last company left. Yeah. Equipment went with them, including buckets or whatever they had purchased. So. Got it. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions? All right. All those in favor, say aye. 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 All those opposed. All right. Three-year renewal. Next, we have item five, which is request to address the board. Do we have anyone who would <coughs> like to address the board this evening? All right, moving into six, curriculum instruction and assessment. So I guess there were minutes for a meeting on April 17th, Pam? Yes, there were. On April 17th, we met at 2.15 in the afternoon. Brian Bruton presented to the committee uh, the comprehensive data profile. Metrics included demographic trends, SAT scores, scorecard rankings, student growth percentiles, AP and IB performance, and achievement gap information. By almost every metric available, MPS continues to perform among the elite school districts in the state of Michigan despite increasing adversity. Efforts to develop comprehensive supports and interventions for at-risk students needs to remain a focus to close the achievement gap and remain amongst the elite performers in the state. We adjourned at 340. All right, thank you. Moving into FFO, Patrick, yep. meeting last Monday. Yep. May 8th, um, two, two main topics were discussed. The first was the bond work. Uh, Mr. Dumbrell, Barton Mallow reviewed and discussed with the committee the most recent executive summary financial report for bond work. The committee also reviewed the work completed at various sites across the district to date. Uh, the second was finance, and Ms. Holdeby reviewed the fin February financial reports. Um, Mrs. Holdeby and Mr. Cooper also reviewed and discussed with the committee the Midland County ESA budget, which we just discussed. Uh, possible tentative agreement with the Massespa employee group was discussed. New of the EnviroClean contract, which we just went through here. Um, then upcoming Purchases require board approval, which we've been through tonight already. Yes. Uh, next meeting is Monday, June 5th at 5 o'clock. All right. Excellent. Thank you very much. Next up, 7.2 for information. Gifts totaling $23,441.39. Wow. <laughs> and there's yeah. 23 of them. So there's a long list, and um, I never do it justice by pointing them all out. But it's, it's always interesting. You get a chance to watch that at the end and just see the differences from uh, the baseball program, anonymous donor for band, uh, uh, a good amount. Uh, the Dow High Art, uh, which they weren't looking for money. They were doing a project, and somebody saw them and rewarded them thusly. Um, you have trap shooting clubs on there, and quite a bit of money there. Classroom literature, money going right in the classroom, field trips. Our usual all-sports boosters helping out a lot. And then, of course, the uh, community, excuse me, the Midland County Youth Action <coughs> Council and also the community gives so um, like always quite a few different awards from many different sources which we always always appreciate. Yep, I see the Dow Swim program. I know they all went and volunteered at the Humane Society for two days. Yep. So for that, I um, love that program. I know I, I love, love to see the yes. kids getting out to vol to volunteer, and uh, my hope is is they learn to love that and love the feeling of giving back and that continues long after the investment in their sport or their activity. All right, next up, in, um, so thank you to all the donors from multiple different mm -hmm. programs to multiple different areas. Next up, we have human resources, so 
memoriams. Yeah. Kind of good we didn't have a meeting because when we have HR meetings, it's usually not a good thing. So we would not have one. We have two memoriams to, to recognize Mr. Thomas Williams, who passed away on April 10th. Mr. Williams taught English at H.J.H. Dow High School, 20 years, retiring in 1999. Okay. Condolences to his family. And Ms. Dorothy Reynolds, who passed away on April 30. Mr. Reynolds taught at Midland Public Schools for 41 years, 36 at East Lawn Elementary. She retired in 1986. Condolences. We have a third one we want to recognize tonight. Our next memoriam is an MPS retiree. This is Rita Hopsenberger, dedicate, dedicated Plymouth Elementary first grade teacher, lost her valiantly fought health battle in April, on April 21 of this year. The vast majority of Mrs. Hopps' MPS career was spent at Plymouth Elementary, teaching first and second graders in a caring, nurturing, filled environment. We are so sad to say our final goodbye to this wonderful MPS team. Our thoughts and well wishes remain with Rita's husband, John, and her two adult children, Johnny and Jenny. All right, thank you. Um, let's see, 8.2. <coughs> so we are um, leasing um, the lease to the uh, MCA um, the services of Mark Ackbarth as a teacher and so they um, buy back and if you recall it used to be full time and now it is half if that's correct point six, point six, six, point six, yep. six. so it's no cost to us flow through to them okay so is this for inf yeah for information only so and I must say, it's good he still remains in the classroom because he's a very well thought of teacher. Enjoyed, so <laughs> it's yeah. good the students can still have him. All right, nine is for information letters to um, letters from the Board of Education. So the list is there. Um, next, scheduled activities for information. Just note that in June, we actually have two board meetings June 12th and June 26th. So that is a bit of a change, so a little bit different um, weeks that we have those. And then item 11 is our study discussion session. So we will um, start. Brad, I'll start with you tonight. Well, I think that how the PYP children came up with their ideas was probably the coolest mm -hmm. because brainstorming based on passions if they can remember to keep that in their life and to do that moving forward, it makes life a lot better. Mm -hmm. And to identify what you want to do with your life. Mm -hmm. Do you want to <coughs> go to college? Do you not want to go to college? What do you want to do for a career? If you do something that you're passionate about, it doesn't feel like you work a day in your life. So I just think that if they can grasp onto that and, and, and practice that throughout their lives, I think it will be very special for them. Uh, the primary years program is awesome. It mm -hmm. is such a wonderful building block for our students and, and I'm so grateful that we have it. It's just, I, I see so many extraordinary things um, as evidenced again tonight. Um, I also <coughs> wanted to say thank you to all the volunteers. <laughs> we singled out those star volunteers, but there are so many people working beyond um, and not getting any recognition and I just wanted to let you know how much you're appreciated and it goes way beyond what you can imagine. Um, we really count on you and um, even though it doesn't always get expressed, um, it's important. The kids love the volunteers, so um, yeah. And um, we didn't talk about it, but um, the curriculum went to the CTE building site and um, what a wonderful program um, to allow students that time to learn to you know it's your own do-it-yourself projects you know how to fix things <laughs> and um, I just want to put it out there to kids to encourage them um, to take part in it you know if you've got an opening in your schedule to to be a part of that um, what I know when my son was in high school, he did, he went to uh, auto shop and did the auto shop program, and and how important it was. He could tra you know change the transmission on his own car. You know, <laughs> it's like saves you a bunch of money if you know how to do all that stuff ahead of time. So, just kudos to that program. Um, thanks, Barry, for for mentioning the unsung heroes. 
um, because there are a tremendous amount of people who work tirelessly uh, day in and day out and you know we can only of course highlight a few of the many um, so it's important that we give a shout out to them as well and they all know who they are and they don't expect anything um, and would never want their names put up in the spotlight so uh, so that was a good thing to say and I appreciate that um, seeing these presentations always reaffirms for me that we're doing something right with these kids because their breadth and their knowledge um, uh, of what they can retain and articulate at a fifth grade level is just so impressive. Mm -hmm. uh, so, it's, so I love meetings like this when we, when we walk into the room and there's boards set up and there's stuff on <coughs> the desk and kids running around, it's great because um, we know it's gonna be a good night. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so great job um, for the presentations and just I wanted to thank all of our donors, it's just amazing. Um, every meeting is, is something cool and uh, again, this week, this meeting doesn't disappoint. So thank you to everybody. Me? Um, you know, same thing. Every week, I, my best part of these meetings is listening to the first 20 minutes. I enjoyed that the most. And like Brad said tonight, what got me was the enthusiasm that the kids had in talking, how happy they were talking about it. It's great to see kids actually happy talking about stuff that they're doing at school and enthused about it versus just being an assignment that they have to get done. Uh, not a lot new. Other than that, I had a chance to go to the Gerstack Awards last week, and uh, what a what an honor that is. Um, being I was on the committee this year, and I tell you, just trying to decide, help decide the winners is. Uh, I underestimated how tough that committee was when yeah. I was asked back <laughs> in November. I was thinking, great, once a couple of meetings, I'm good, no big deal. But uh, they all deserve mm -hmm. they all deserve awards, and to go through 50 or 60 letters and pick four is uh, a daunting task. So. Awesome seeing the families and the awards and cool night. Mm -hmm. I look forward to going next year. Mm -hmm. It was beautiful. I, I love that. Every year, it's my favorite, one of my favorite things to do. Um, last Tuesday, Mary, Mike, and I went to Lansing and uh, we went to a, a legislative conference and there were superintendents, board members, and legislators um, there that we heard from. We heard from Tim Kelly, um, Robert Kozowski, uh, Phil Pavlov, and Senator Hun Young Hopgood. And uh, we discussed uh, the current status of the school aid budget, the Michigan merit curriculum, the teacher, sh teacher shortages, and school starting before Labor Day, among other issues. Uh, I thought it was a good use of our time. It was great to go down together and uh, we had breakout sessions where we were able to get uh, um, a lot more information in smaller groups where we could have discussions too. So uh, very valuable and uh, appreciated the opportunity to go down there. Yeah. Well, it's um, been fun to acknowledge all the um, shining stars in the Gerstacker Awards. And last week, I believe, was Teacher Appreciation Week. So I know there were lots of things going on then. So. Um, just a big thank you to our teachers because I, I think we see at our meetings like we saw tonight with the students um, they, they just do remarkable just remar you're doing remarkable things with our students and um, just to capture a few of the comments that the kids made that the, these projects and what they're learning is um, they, they change the way they changing the way they look at the world and I'm thinking they're 10 and they're 10 years old it's, it's just amazing and when the one um, Amy said one comment about how just how I feel about myself and uh, developing that self-esteem and, and a, a bigger broader outlook of the world um, how to make an impact on the earth on culture um, and how music can inspire to change the world even as an adult I guess I don't always I don't think about those things. You go through your busy day and, and realize that what you do, what you say, how you do it, what you learn, it, it, it does. It impacts you and the world. And then they give back by the, the Humane Society or whatever way they've chosen to give back to their community or the world. So just remarkable. I, I just am continually amazed. So thank you, students. Thank you, teachers. Um, our shining star oh, stars, Joni and Sherry, and uh, as Mary mentioned, the we went to the Building Trades House this afternoon, and they are having an open house Saturday. 
So if people are available to go on May 20th from noon to 2, it's well worth your time to stop in and the students will be there and see what they're doing. And, and having that partnership this year with the Reese uh, Endeavor is just amazing. There'll be a, an adult that will be able to move into this wheelchair except accessible home and you know have his own place it's just very heartwarming and to know that we're a part of that and once again our students are learning not just how to build a house but they're impacting someone's world and they're making a difference and mm -hmm. I think that's huge probably the biggest lesson that anybody world can learn. Three Swan, was that that mm -hmm. Yeah there. yeah so it's on East yep 406 and 408 East Lawn Drive so it's across from the Little League field there okay. on East Lawn. So I encourage you to go over and, and check it out. Makes me want to go home and do a lot of things to my house now. <laughs> All right. Well, I think first I'll start with Gerstacker Award. So I want to really thank Patrick for serving oh, yes. as our board rep on that committee. And yes, it is a lot of work to read through them and very hard decision making to because they, they're all deserving. <laughs> Everyone that you read, you wish that you could give them the award. So thank you very much for the time that it took to do that and for the speech that you gave at the um, award ceremony. Congratulations to our Gerstacker Award winners. Um, I appreciate, I think most of the board members attended, which was great. Um, and thank you, Cindy. I know you put in a lot of hard work on that and always a fabulous event. So thank you for all the time that you put into that. Um, congratulations to all our star volunteers, and um, that's great that we do that once a year. Um, this Saturday, we have Midland Blooms, and we're putting together our own group that are going to go out and plant, so I'm looking forward to that. Uh, prom is also this Saturday, so that should be exciting. So if people want to see all the kids dressed up, come on out to Dow Gardens late afternoon, early evening to see all that. And um, tonight we actually signed diplomas before the meeting, which is always an exciting time of the year, but also unbelievable that we're to that, this point of the year. By the time our next board meeting, we will have already been through graduation. So I know it's something as board members, we always really look forward to attending graduation and being part of that experience and um, celebrating the accomplishments of all our students. Um, I think that was about all I had for tonight. Turn it over to you, Mike. In the Gerstacker, I want to thank you for the foundation. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. To continue to support yes. that number of years that they have. They're a great partner to us. Um, I wrote to you a little bit about our advanced physics course at Midland mm -hmm. High and some enrollment number issues. And um, we were looking to combine the two. Uh, Dow High would have two sections to combine. One of the sections there and looking at does it work best in the zero hour. Mm -hmm. uh, we fought a little bit of resistance from parents and uh, students who weren't real happy with that. Um, I think maybe the short notice was part of our issue. Mm -hmm. So we have decided to run it and try to increase those numbers a little bit. And I think we can get at least to the high teens, still lower than we'd want to be, um, and then make a, a long-term plan to begin with, to look at that blended I wrote to you. Mm -hmm. So maybe yep. we offer a blended and then one. You know, and maybe not the best, but I think some of the labs vary. You were saying to trip across town, you do the labs one and the other, and we meet in the middle on a little bit of the blended on the online world. We can make that go. As we go smaller with two high schools, the number of options we have to continue to pose us some problems, we have to get creative, yeah. creative to continue to offer those options. We want to decrease the options, we want to increase the options, and how do we continue to deliver that? So uh, we'll take a little longer time and take a look at that one because that kind of popped up on us on staff mm -hmm. pretty quick. We have to admit, and we were trying to deal with that and stay efficient in what we do. Uh, so to park tours. Uh, Feel like a full-time tour guide. I have a, Cindy, I think I have four of them this week going or something along that line. Um, fun one last week it was taking uh, approximately 20 superintendents from our area oh, to their uh -huh. schools, beginning to have influence on other schools. I say a little um, bit of bragging there. Every one of them. <laughs> yeah. They all, you know, each, you know, we're very collaborative, and so mm -hmm, right. you know, they were able to pull some ideas and concepts that they're going to be able to do. You know, Harrison and Claire Gladwin just passed a a bond and um, he's redoing his high school mm -hmm. and he's going, oh, hmm. makerspace, I don't just, how'd you create that? And so, you know, they're going to be able to pull some ideas and concept there, but we know the real magic is what our teachers are going to do in this space. We can build mm -hmm. the space, but the real magic is there. Well, so I think that was our hope all along too, right? That we would use it to open it up so yeah. that others could learn from our experiences yeah, too. Right, right. Yeah, so that was kind of neat. 
Uh, Final R Schools was out this weekend, and if you didn't get a chance, Cindy's okay. got a whole bunch of them outside ready for you to take home with you, and make sure you get them out and take a few and pass them out, and we'll have to get that information to some of our um, residents that don't get information to the parent component of how, how we mm -hmm. spread information, so that's always a good tool to get to those other residents in our community. Um, I wrote to you a couple times about our agenda group transition chart. Um, we're going to make you take a formal action on that hire in June. Mm -hmm. um, it's no secret. It's out there. We've told everybody. Right. So it's, um, we are looking to um, expand and cross-train and bring JAG right back in and then also fade back down to a uh, three-person team like we are again today with a little bit different duties um, as we go there. So. <laughs> well, and when you say expand, though, it's going back to something we had been Correct. a past fill, time, fill a, not that fill long ago. That we right. chose not to fill. Right. And we're filling it at a lower level as well. Mm -hmm. We recall that. Right, to, right. To the two associates. So you're, you're correct. Yes. You're correct there. And that's all I have because we have one more item we got to do today. All right. So at this time, I need to have a motion to move into closed session for a discussion on the Midland City Educational Support Personnel Association contract ratification discussion. So we will go into closed session, and when we come back into open session, um, we will be voting on that. Yeah. So no action is taken in closed. Right. More of a discussion about the terms so that the board members have full before they actually, they actually have to uh, make their decision. But I do need a motion to so go. So moved. Through. All right. Support. All right. Moved by Scott. Support by Mary. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? All right, so at this time I ask that. Three. All right, so at this time, this time I will entertain a motion for consideration of the contract ratification. Consideration or approval? Well, it's worded consideration of contract ratification. Okay, I will move that we consider the contract ratification. All right. Support. Moved by Scott, support by Patrick. Is there any discussion? I'm glad they, they were able to work together and the yes. proposal process worked again. Uh, they worked through a, a few, um, few things, but uh, we got through it. I think it's good for both both sides so I'm glad uh, both sides came out with a agreeable contract do we need to reword how it's worded in here right. okay yeah. you did consider it now you're going to, to approve, approve it okay I will amend my motion Okay. All of them are support that we <laughs> approve yeah, the new contract. That sounds better. All right. As discussed. Any discussion on that? Mm -hmm. All right. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? All right. Thank you for all your hard work. All right. At this time, seeing no other comments, we will adjourn.